If I say the words alternative energy, what do you think of? Probably solar panels and wind turbines immediately come to mind. And you might be imagining these sources charging electric cars in a future technology-based utopia where energy is free. But what if there are other alternative energies out there that, for some reason, aren't being talked about in most media outlets? Today we'll explore four types of alternative energy that you've probably never heard of. Make sure to stay till the end to find out why these forms of alternative energy are important. The first alternative energy source is alcohol as fuel. Alcohol as fuel is not a new idea, and in fact, the first mass-produced automobile, the Ford Model T, was designed to run off of 100% gasoline, 100% ethanol, or any combination of the two. Henry Ford wanted American farmers in remote areas to be able to fuel their vehicles with a different type of fuel that they could potentially even make on their farms if they found themselves far away from a gas station. Surprisingly, the Indy 500 has been using fuel that's 85% ethanol or methanol and 15% high-octane race fuel since about 1965. Alcohol has a higher power output than gasoline and is safer if there's a fire since it can be extinguished with water, unlike fires caused by gasoline. Alcohol also burns much cleaner than gasoline, and theoretically, engines that use alcohol need much fewer oil changes than their gasoline counterparts due to less carbon buildup in the engine. Although ethanol isn't as fuel efficient as gasoline, it burns almost completely clean. So you might be wondering, why isn't ethanol available at the pump now? In some states it is, and in some countries like Brazil, you can choose between ethanol and gasoline at the pump. Ford actually makes a flex fuel engine which can run completely off gasoline or ethanol. Sticking to the theme of fuel, the second alternative energy source I've been thinking a lot about is used cooking oil. This was really popular around 2008 or so when a lot of Americans and Europeans were taking old Volkswagen or Mercedes diesel cars and converting them to run off of used cooking oil. The concept is actually older than that though since Rudolf Diesel designed his engine to run off industrial seed oils before these oils were used in the food industry. Since cooking oil around the world is usually just thrown out, using it to fuel diesel cars or even trucks sounds like a great alternative and even though there are still emissions, they are overall less than regular diesel and definitely less than manufacturing a brand new car. Mythbusters tested both alcohol and cooking oil in two separate episodes, and what was really cool to see was that both fuels worked, but the cars that used alcohol probably needed to be reprogrammed to run a little bit more smoothly. Running alcohol in a normal gasoline engine and not a flex fuel one can damage some of the components such as rubber hoses, seals, and gaskets, but replacing these with other materials seems like a better solution than manufacturing a global fleet of, say, brand new electric vehicles. And now, transitioning from fuels to energy sources, the third alternative fuel source that I've been thinking a lot about lately is something called the Molten Salt Reactor. If you haven't heard of these before, it's worth looking up on YouTube or anywhere else online to learn more about them because they're supposed to be pretty efficient and safer than the current nuclear power plants that we use. In the 1950s and 60s, an alternative to the current nuclear reactors was created that used molten salt, typically thorium, instead of the fuel rods that current nuclear power plants use. It also had a built-in safety mechanism. In the event of an emergency like a power outage, a plug of solid salt would automatically melt if there was any increase in the fuel's temperature, causing all of the radioactive fuel to drain into a safety storage tank where, instead of melting down or causing an explosion, it would just sit there and solidify. The technology was so safe that apparently the researchers let the reactor run by itself over the weekend. Also, the waste that is generated by molten salt reactors decays much faster than the waste that's generated from current nuclear reactors. Now, there's still a lot of research that needs to be done to make this technology a viable option, but there are actually some key global players that are showing interest in using molten salt reactors to generate electricity in the future. The fourth and final alternative energy source is tidal energy. To harness tidal energy, underwater turbines or generators are spun back and forth by the movements of the tides, and the movement is used to generate the electricity. Some companies at the moment are using slow spinning turbines either placed in strategic points at the bottom of the ocean or that are floated at the surface of the ocean so that they can easily be moved to another location. Another type of tidal energy system is called a tidal range power plant. 
Tidal range power plants are usually placed in bays where they can gather an enormous amount of energy for a relatively low cost. But unfortunately, the costs of disturbing migrating fish and wildlife can be pretty high with this type of tidal energy plant. What I find so appealing about using alternative fuels like alcohol or biodiesel is that existing cars only need minor modifications to be able to run off them. It seems like a much more attainable solution to lowering air pollution than, for example, manufacturing billions of new electric cars and batteries that require aluminum, cobalt, and other rare earth elements, and building all new infrastructure to generate, transport, and store electricity to charge the billions of new electric vehicles. When the energy to transfer all of the new raw materials across the globe is included, replacing some of the components on pre-existing cars to get them to run smoothly off of ethanol, methanol, or used cooking oil seems like it would save an insane amount of money and resources while cutting down on pollution in general. Using alternative energy generation like molten salt reactors or tidal generators at first glance seems to have less drawbacks than solar or wind, which are both costly to produce and require pretty huge amounts of land to operate. Tidal energy generation isn't perfect, but placing stations off the coast would free up areas of land to conserve or to use for something else. Molten salt reactors on paper sound a lot safer than current nuclear reactors and could be a game changer in terms of providing cleaner electricity in the future while taking up a lot less physical space than wind or solar. The reason we should think about alternative forms of energy generation is that current solutions require a lot of energy to manufacture, transport, and install. In the case of alcohol or biodiesel, existing cars can be converted to using these fuels rather than manufacturing hundreds of millions of new vehicles along with having to build all new infrastructure to charge them. That may be part of the solution, but I think another big part of the solution is going to be retrofitting the cars that we have to run off of sustainable, renewable fuels. And I wanted to close with something to think about in terms of wind energy. If you think about it, to build a wind turbine you need aluminum, which itself requires an insane amount of energy to extract from its natural form, bauxite, epoxy resins, which are basically BPA, toxic to produce, toxic if exposed to heat or fire, and probably toxic to dispose of as well, concrete for pouring the foundation of the turbine which also requires a ton of energy to manufacture, and loads of other materials before even including the costs of fuel to transport all of those materials from their raw form to factories to warehouses and then to the final installation place. So after thinking about how much energy is required to manufacture new equipment such as wind turbines or solar panels or even new power plants, uh, I can't help but think that at least part of the solution if we put tidal energy aside, is to retrofit the cars and even maybe retrofit some of the nuclear power plants that we have active today to run off of alcohol, biodiesel, used cooking oil, uh, or convert reactors to more sustainable or safer versions of nuclear reactors like molten salt reactors. So these are four types of alternative energy that you might not have heard about. And if you know of any others, please let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment to continue the conversation below. Thank you so much for watching.